Thank you for the uh, kind remarks, uh, especially uh, chairperson. Uh, please allow me to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me. Although the audience are very few, that's nice because people who are really interested are here. So I shall not take any more time for my introduction. Although my talk may sound very mundane, you know, after so many talks of uh, big scientific achievements, scientific discoveries, but the to topic I am talking, I think is very, very important. Uh, uh, important. People who are interested in the prevention of diabetes. Uh, so you know, the uh, diabetes was recognized as an epidemic by the IDF and WHO. Then in 2006, it was recognized by the United Nations as well, you see. But here, uh, I would especially request you to go through the, uh, the declaration that was made in the United Nations. So don't think it's just a simple piece of paper. There is direction that to be used, that every country, every organization under the umbrella of the United Nations to take up measures for prevention and make a national policy for prevention. Uh, and this pandemic is mainly for diabetes, uh, for type 2 diabetes, which is largely preventable. And that's what is the subject of topic that I am talking on. Here, it may not be out of place to mention that this United Nations resolution was officially started by a letter from me, to the government of Bangladesh. And it was passed unanimously in 2006. I will not go through this, you see, diabetic epidemic, these are figures, has been shown, you know, uh, in every measures, there's epidemic, you see, the diagnosed, undiagnosed, pre-diabetes, everything, you see, this, uh, I shall not go through it, uh, and also I will not go through it, I will concentrate on this. You see, to understand the prevention, we have to understand the basic reason, basic cause for the disease, you see. It is a combination of gene and environment. We all know it. But to make people understand, one should give simple examples. By seed, we mean like the tree, the seed, unless it's planted, it won't grow another tree. So that's the importance of the environment. And we know that gene, we cannot, for practical purpose, we cannot really modify it. But here I am raising another point. You see, this diabetic gene is not a single gene disease. But these genes may also give survival advantages. And that's why we will not be able to eliminate. However, we must try. I am just citing an example. In the same jungle, a leopard or tiger and a deer lives. And a leopard's take-up speed is 90 miles. And it can go up to 120 miles. A deer take up a speed not more than 20 miles, can go up to 40 miles. So all leopards should catch all the deer, but they cannot, because there's an issue of endurance. If the leopard cannot close the gap in five minutes, they can't do it, you see. But deer can run for, for, for an hour or, or more than that. So endurance and the importance, and when you are hunter-gatherer, the ability to continue continue hunting, hunting or, you know, collecting from nature my, is a, was an important issue. So then if you have a little bit of diabetic gene, that might give an example. There are scientific evidences for it, you see. So now, when normal people develop insulin resistance, they can overcome it by raising the amount of insulin. And when people have low insulin, insulin secondary capacity, which is genetically determined, they cannot overcome it and they develop diabetes. So our uh, hypothesis is that type 2 diabetes is a progressive disease and this progression, once you get really proper diabetes, then it's not curable. I mean, you can say remission this and that, but then if you expose them again, they become diabetic, uh, glucose intolerance again. Now, even if the, all the factors for prevention are not known. But we know for certain the lifestyle modification there and there is also chemo prevention. 
I shall just show this uh, slide. You know, there are many, many studies that show trauma prevention. We, we did a study, we haven't yet published it. Even sulfonylurea in small dose also can give prevention, you see. Uh, so I'm just not showing it. And this prevention is highly cost effective, you see, uh, for lifestyle metformin. And there are evidence that if you combine lifestyle with metformin, that increases more prevention. Although some studies shown it doesn't add, but our own studies have shown that it adds. You see. And as I said, that the United Nations resolution requested all government to adopt a policy of national prevention. We ourselves submitted this to the government, and and here you can see even maternal nutrition that has been mentioned is in the policy. You see, but. Uh, to my knowledge, no government has formally in developing countries adopted national policy. I think we people who are in the field of diabetes care and prevention should impress upon the government to take up a national policy. We ourselves have adopted many means, you see. We have adopted means of making a movie with an idea of uh, giving uh, you know, prevention uh, message. Here I will, I will mention you about one cinema, many of you might have seen, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. If you have seen it, if you come out from the cinema hall, you will really wonder who was psychiatrically normal. And that message by the cinema can be more than reading thousand pages book. You see. So we made a movie like that, you see. It was released in Bangladesh on the cinema hall. We composed folk songs. Uh, played in you know in places uh, by marketplace and etc. So that we can create this, and we took up a uh, project that we will screen people in workplaces where you can get large number of people, and then identify people who are normal, uh, who are pre-diabetic, let's say, and who are, who are diabetic, and appropriately advise. You see, even normal people would be advised how to keep themselves in normal condition. You see. Uh, um, and and we have seen that this is rising prevalence. I shall not go through the figures. You see, uh, the factory figures showed that how many. You see, pre-diabetic diabetes are very high even in working places. So these are the figures. Um, so uh, all showed that this uh, prevent. Now, diabetic astro Bangladesh, as I said, that is the largest diabetic astro in the world. We look after more than 60 lakh diabetics, you see. About 70% of the diabetics of the country, say. The detection rate of diabetes in Bangladesh, maybe one can say the highest in the all developing countries, you see, uh, because of our association. Uh, and so we took diabetes prevention as a core program of the association. This is what I am going to discuss. Now, important thing, as everybody said, but uh, everybody has mentioned, but very one important thing, people, the medical workers, or people who are interested in prevention are not taking up. Here, that's the one I said. Here amongst you, is there anybody who doesn't know that smoking is harmful? Everybody knows. And those of you who have, have taken a path in your life, you will agree this is very, very disagreeable, you see. But still, the cigarette companies can induce people take, to take up smoking. Now compare ourselves with them. But they are able to recruit people to become smoker. In spite, it's so harmful and so disagreeable. So they know the right language how to motivate people. The main point of my talk is that we ourselves do not know the right language, what will motivate. We know that lifestyle modification will have a big effect on prevention. But what language will really motivate lifestyle? You see, we complain that we have been telling this, 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 but people do not listen. But in actual fact of my thesis is that we do not know the right language. Here I'm showing some of the right language that cigarette companies uh, use, and you can see Ronald Reagan speaking, smoking, you see. At that time, he was an actor. 
And uh, those of you who are from Bangladesh, Bengali, you know this character, you see, Uttam Kumar, the greatest cinema hero Bangladesh ever produced, you see, the Bengal ever produced, you see, this is smoking. So, like they have, they have linked smoking with romance, they have linked romance, smoking with smartness, even in, with good health, you see, if, if you remember the advertisement of um, Cowboy, you see, Cowboy, and he later on developed lung cancer, if you know. So really, so we are now experimenting with one thing. Then in developing countries, the people are religious, whatever religion they are. And in every religion, there is a strong message about good health. Good health. Can we use them as a medium for, uh, for spreading the message? So first one we targeted was the marriage registers. In Bangladesh, they are called Kazis. Kazis. So we took up the view, why start after pregnancy? Why don't we start at the, at the time of solemnizing marriage? You see? marriage. And there we took, and the project we call uh, preconception. Here, I'll just go through the some slides. You see, we started this, uh, just financed by World Diabetes Foundation. Uh, this, these, are, these are in Bengali. But we used various sort of flip charts, this front to face to face, everything, this. And um, the, our slogan was that uh, preconception clinic, and uh, you see, these are the, these are the uh, leaflet that we distributed. Uh, so these are the details, you see. But here, then, we, we thought how to make it a sustainable program. So we started preconception centers in our centers. Here, here, I have to mention that we have got centers all over Bangladesh. You see. There is at least, at least one in every district. And some district has got more than 10. So there we have opened a desk for preconception center where the people, the couple can go and get advice, you see, advice. Uh, at a cost of 600 taka, which is equivalent to, you see, 100 taka is less than a dollar, so $6. Uh, this and that will include the uh, laboratory tests, include the advice, including that. And we have made it self sustainable. You see, in fact, there you can see the division of the money the counselor gets 50, physician gets 50, health center will get 450, and the project will have still 50 surplus. You see, uh, surplus. And, and that, that's how, and these are the different visits, uh, uh, visits, and these are the you know, uh, the marriage ceremony there, you see, you can see that uh, white lady who was from the WDF, you see, she attended a marriage the whole, whole time. Uh, and we made baseline surveys in the, at the time of marriage, how many of them had glucose intolerance and this. Actual uh, preconception center advice is that before you contemplate pregnancy, because God has given us enough knowledge by which we can plan pregnancy. So theoretically, and you can say practically, all marriage can be planned. So there should be no unplanned pregnancy. So that was, that's the issue. And you check the uh, lady, who, who, the couple who want to take up baby, so that their weight is controlled, their enemy is controlled, Hypertension is controlled if they have, and then contemplate pregnancy, then perhaps you will uh, have less complicated pregnancy, normal babies, and also uh, it will reduce GDM, perhaps, I said. Uh, so, uh, so these are some of the data have been published. I will not go through it. Uh, not go to go through it. But these are simple findings. Uh, that uh, uh, what what was the knowledge about GDM at at that time? I shall not go through it. Uh, so I'll I'll go through come to the main point. You see, we found that it has spread the message, and also we followed up. See how many of these people who have been advised really come for follow up. You see, come for follow up. Seventy percent of the newly married uh, women visited our center after getting the advice. So there's a big response. Uh, response. 
very inexpensive way of spreading the message. Message, and we were able to uh, persuade the government that this message should be given. And you know, the Muslim marriage is like a business contract, and with the contract is written on a uh, on a paper, you see, signed by the uh, 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 Kazi, which is, Kazi is appointed by the government, law ministry, you see, and and every uh, the, this contract is called Kavin. Kabin, which, in, which is a uh, Arabic word, and this Kabin will carry a seal that advice has been given. That we were able to do that. Uh, in fact, our this study was discussed at the United Nations event because it was a high, uh, high impact study. Okay. And that's the guidebook that we give preconception clinic, and the slogan is. Healthy mother, healthy child, prosperous country. That's the, that's the slogan that we made. Uh, and the next project that we took is that why not use religious leaders who are, let's say, Muslims, uh, Imam, you see, who conducts the prayer in the mosque, and the uh, Sanatan or Hindu priests, and the uh, bishops, archbishops of the Christian community, and Mahatharas of the Buddhist community. We discussed with all of them. I'll just show that Bangladesh is about 95% Muslim country. I'm just showing only the mosque project, you see. And in fact, in the Muslim religion, there's a very, 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 you can, you can make 100 very, uh, that message for good health. Like, you should not eat more than one third of your tummy, of your belly. So then you will not have obesity. You see. I'm just giving one example. If you have very full stomach, your prayer would not be accepted. Very, very strong message. So we did, what we did, that, you know, in Muslim uh, Friday prayer, the Imam gives a sermon, which is called Khutbah. According to the religious dictum, that sermon should be about what a good Muslim should do at this time of the year. We discussed with the uh, Imam's uh, association. Are they prepared to give this message during sermon? And they were all agreed that they will do it. So we recruited experts in religion and to form the khutbah. The sermon is called khutbah. They form the khutbah. And we've, we were able to persuade the government to print 10 million of the khutbah and distributed them throughout the country. Also, this khutbah was authenticated by Cairo's Al-Azhar University. So Al-Azhar's University is... Uh, Accreditation, which is called uh, anyhow, it's called, called semi-official. Then we sent it to sent, sent it to Kaaba, uh, and then it was also authenticated, and that was we distributed. So and this was financed by this. Uh, we trained the imams you see, to do it. We controlled some of these. You see, uh, and coming to the end. And then in the mosque, the, uh, in Bangladesh, the female don't go. So we recruited female through girls guide, did the same thing. Uh, I'm coming to the, so it was approved by this. Subsequently, we distributed this to all the OIC countries uh, so that they, are, they can take, uh, take up this. Uh, I'll come to the end. Then we have opened a diabetes center in, in mosque. We have opened it in 100 mosques, you see. Uh, but we plan to open it all the mosques. Uh, and it's also made, we made it self-sustaining, this project self-sustaining. So these are khutbas. And the self-sustaining to the extent the imams can make a little earning out of that. We train the imams to use taps. You see? So we have collected large amounts of data, which are, can be transported to our center. So because now we are doing an impact study. Uh, so we should be uh, uh, first phase of the impact study will be over by by next six months through these taps. You see? Uh, so that's the program. Uh, I'll come to the end. Uh, we have started the national registry, and then. 
we discussed, as I said, with, with the others, so that we are going to start next year with other religion, you see. Uh, and so, uh, this has been published. Uh, I'll just come to the end. So, I'm, what I'm saying that we also did study like participatory cycle and we showed that it can reduce uh, incidence of diabetes by 60% participatory uh, learning cycle. Also, we did M Health through mobile messaging and found that it increases awareness but, but did not have an impact. Maybe that we have to do it more. Uh, so, I'll just answer. So, my conclusion is prevention of diabetes is feasible, but we have to give attention to use the right language and right medium. And I will appeal to all of you and the chairman that we uh, physicians or people who are interested in prevention, we give enough attention and do research work to find out the right language. Thank you.